Job hunting sucks right now. So in an effort to help you out, I built a free tool that allows you to find specifically tailored data jobs that are great fits for you based only on your resume. Seriously, just upload your resume and boom, you got tailored job listings ready for you to apply. And I built this entire tool using a data platform called Nime, which allows you to do data analytics and data engineering with a visual interface, which makes the whole process kind of feel like building data Legos. And they are actually the sponsor for this episode, but more on them in a bit. So to test this tool out and to see if it was any good, I asked one of my bootcamp students, Yua, if we could try it with her resume. So here's what we do. You use the link in the show notes down below and you're going to upload your resume. So we'll go ahead and upload you its resume. Then go for the job title you want. In this case, data analyst. Next, you're going to say your location. Uitz is Charlotte, North Carolina. And finally, you're going to give a brief summary of what your search goals are. So for her, it's going to land first data analyst job. You'll then press next right here and wait a few seconds for it to finish the results. And bam, you get your own personalized dashboard here. So on the left-hand side, this is where you have the top 10 job matches for you uh, and a little bit of personalized tips right here. Then you have the job map here that lets you see where the different jobs are and some basic information about them. So if you live in a certain area, you can check it out there. And then on the right-hand side, this is basically the top 10 jobs that it has for you with the descriptions, the location, the company, as well as the salary, and of course, a link to apply. You'll need to hit control click to open that up. There's also a fun little histogram up here that shows you kind of uh, the salary distributions of what you can kind of expect based off of the jobs it found for you. So pretty fun way to just find some new jobs that you could possibly apply for. I have a link for you to try this tool down in the description down below. So go try it out and let me know what you think in the comments. I am of course hoping it'll be useful for you and help you find a few data jobs to apply for. But in the meantime, let me show you how I built it and how you can actually build something quite similar even if you're not a data expert already. To start, I wanna tell you about why I chose to build this tool in Nime and you may have never heard of Nime before and that's totally okay. I'll I'll explain what it is and when you might use it. So that way, if you ever see it on a job description, you don't have to like panic and be like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what this thing is. Can I, I've never even heard of it, right? Uh, let's explain what it is. So like I mentioned earlier, Nime is a data analytics and automation platform. And it's honestly becoming a more popular choice of doing data analytics and data engineering because one, it's free and open source. And we like free, we like open source. Who doesn't like that, right? And number two, it makes data analytics and data engineering honestly fun and easy. Using Nime feels like playing with data Legos. Instead of writing really long coding scripts, you're actually pushing data through a visual workflow with data building blocks like data Legos. And it's a lot easier to do complex data manipulation because you're doing it with like little building blocks and Legos instead of writing lots of code, which of course that makes it more fun. And it makes it a lot easier to do, especially if you're not even all that technical, you can do this stuff and it's not too bad. Another reason I chose Nime is it has this awesome feature that makes it super, super, super easy to share data web apps, like this resume one that I showed you earlier with just a couple clicks. And that is insanely valuable uh, because that's actually usually pretty hard to do. Let me explain why with a quick story. So when I was a data scientist at ExxonMobil, I was doing cool data science things. I was building cool data science projects. And I like to think that these projects were technically difficult, right? We were doing cool things where we were like predicting gasoline consumption and trying to figure out what oils to buy around the world. And we were doing most of these projects in Python. And it was like hundreds and hundreds of lines of Python code. We were using all sorts of different Python libraries, some that you've heard of, some you've never heard of before. And we were using some decently complicated machine learning algorithms. And so it wasn't easy. It was definitely like kind of hard. But despite all that, the hardest part might have actually been when we actually finished writing all of the code. We're like, hey, we built this really cool tool, but how do we actually give it to an uh, end business user who doesn't know how to use Python, doesn't have Python installed on their machine, doesn't know anything about data? Like, how do we give it to a layman and be like, hey, we built you this cool tool, now use it. Uh, and that was actually a really hard question to solve. You could send them the script and install Python on their computer, but that seems like overly complicated. And also how do they actually run it? Do they just click run and like an ID? It's, it's complicated. Do we just give it to a notebook? I don't know. That doesn't seem like we're actually solving the problem. So um, this is something that we actually solved at Exxon most of the time by building pretty intensive web apps, but that required us to write more Python code. So we'd solve the problem 
problem with more Python code. And that took a ton of time and a ton of resources because not only is it a lot of coding, but it's also a ton of data engineering to give us like the access and like the CPUs and uh, I don't know, hosting it and all that stuff. It's, it's kind of over my pay grade, but it was annoying and it would take forever and it would require a lot of people's help. Like I couldn't just do it by myself at Exxon. So with this tool, with Nime, it has like this data app feature built right in, which makes it super easy to just hand off to end business users like yourselves. So it's kind of like Tableau Public, if you ever used Tableau Public before, where you can just create a dashboard and share a link right away. Nime's the exact same way where you can create these dashboards or web apps and you have a link you just copy that link and you can literally send it to uh, anyone you want to and they can use your cool tool. So if you or your company are doing complex data operations with lots of data manipulation, lots of data visualization, and you wanna do it in like a simple, fun manner that makes it easy to share and for easy for people to use, Nine might be a really good choice and that's when you'd want to maybe check it out. So let me actually explain how you'd use these data Legos and how they work here by showing you how I built this tool and how you could even rebuild it yourself or download the workflow template and then just edit it and make some changes and make it your own. So basically what you need to know is this workflow has three to four main parts. The resume part right here in yellow, the job part here in orange, and then of course the dashboard part here in red, which is kind of split into two with the AI part here and then the assembling the dashboard part here. Now, each one of these little squares that you see right here is called a node and data flows in the node from this direction where some sort of data transformation occurs and then out the other side to future nodes downstream as illustrated kind of with these arrows right here. Now let's break down each one of these sections one by one. The first part we have right here is the resume portion. And this is just really a node right here, which basically creates the landing page that you saw earlier with all those different form questions to upload your resume and to tell them about yourselves. Now, usually building web pages like this is pretty difficult to do, but seriously not super hard to do in a platform like Nime where it's all low code, drag and drop, no coding required. Next, we have the job board section over here, which is in orange. And the first thing we do here is we have our jobs API node, which is actually just almost like a folder for a whole little mini workflow inside of the folder. Now you'll see here that we're using a get request node, which just basically lets us call our job board API based on the information that we gave it from that landing page. And you can see some of the data inside of it. It's basically pulling the titles, so on and so forth. Then the remaining nodes are kind of just to clean and organize the job listing data. Job listing data obviously is not super structured a lot of the time because it's just words, it's not numbers doesn't fit like in a table, right? So this is just kind of us organizing and cleaning that data. And then the remaining nodes inside this section right here are essentially just doing more data cleanup, helping us create the data that will feed into our LLM. We're also doing some data cleaning down here with regular expressions where we're trying to pull out the salaries inside of the job descriptions and then report that to you on the dashboard page. Now, all the data here basically gets fed into this section right here, which is our AI section. The top nodes up here are where you're going to input your own LLM API keys, which is basically your password to use some sort of tool like OpenAI inside of this app. And then of course, selecting what model you'd like to use. In this case, we are choosing to use GPT 4.1. And then lastly, we have this LLM prompter node down here at the bottom, which is essentially our message to chat GPT with instructions on what to do. Now you'll notice with all these arrows, it's getting our personal resume info, the job listing info, and all of the info from the previous task passed into that. All of our information is then fed into our final section right here, which is the dashboard node. And this is the final page of the web app. This is where we have all the settings to create the actual dashboard page. So to recap, in this workflow, we have a form that first collects all of the user data, a data cleanup section that extracts information from the resume, cleans it up, and then calls a job board API, an AI section that creates custom tips for us based off of all the previous information collected, and then lastly, our user-friendly dashboard to display all that information to the user. And this is all built using Nimes data building block Legos. So super fun to build and super easy to do. So I hope you now see how it's possible to do serious data analysis workflows using this type of platform. And I know a lot of companies are using tools like Nime to simplify their lives, make it easy, and create cool things like this. In fact, one of the alumni from my bootcamp, Trevor Maxwell, uses Nime a decent amount at work. You can hear Trevor's full story of going from printer technician to data analyst by clicking on the YouTube card here, or I'll have a link to it down below in the show notes. And by the way, if you wanna customize this workflow and make it your very own or make it better, because I definitely think it could be better, you totally can. So step one, 
one, you just wanna download this example workflow. We'll have a link to it in the description down below. Next, you'd want to download Nime and it's free to get started. We'll also have a link to that down below in the description. And then lastly, you'd want to open that downloaded workflow in Nime. From here, you can edit any of the nodes or add more nodes or take away things. You can literally do almost anything. Just remember, you'll need to enter your own OpenAI API and job board API. And this is probably the trickiest part since these are third party external tools. So that would be a little bit tricky. But other than that, you could literally do so many things. You could increase the number of jobs returned. You could add some analysis about what skills are mentioned the most. Maybe you could even create some sort of a scoring system. Like there's so many different things you could be doing with this guys. So Go ahead, try it out. Overall, I hope you now, one, have a fun tool to test to try to find different data jobs. Two, you understand how you can actually analyze real data with low code building blocks, Legos, right? It's a lot of fun. And three, I hope you know what Nime is so you won't be scared when you see it on a job description. And you can be like, oh yeah, Avery talked about that in an episode. I'm hoping all of this is going to help you on your data journey. And if you want more help on your data journey, hit subscribe. I've got a lot more useful tips to share.